everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is long overdue. I am going to finally film a sleep training Q&A based off of my original sleep training video that I did almost an entire year ago. When I first published the gentle sleep training for your child, how I did it in less than a week, I was not expecting a huge response out of it. It's just something that I was going through with my son and I thought, hey, this really worked for me and so I'm gonna help a bunch of other mamas out <laughs> and post what I'm doing and not just talk to you about it, but actually show you what I do to sleep train. So I did that right when my son turned a year old and he slept through the night within a week and he still sleeps through the night regularly. And he takes a two hour nap every single day between noon and one o'clock. Now, I still get tons of questions with details like, well, what do you do if you co-sleep? Or what do you do if the baby just doesn't stop crying? I thought this was supposed to be gentle, et cetera, et cetera. And so today I'm going to answer all of those questions and hopefully shed a little bit more light on how the easy training method works, um, a little bit more about Tracy Hogg and the Baby Whisperer book that I referenced in that video, and all that good stuff. So grab a cup of coffee, get cozy, settle in, because this is gonna be a long video. I'm gonna go into detail and try to be as specific as possible. So let's jump right in. The first question I have, and I've got all of it here on my phone, is did you use the same method for resettling during the night if the baby wakes up? Yes, so when you start this routine, it's important to be consistent. You don't want to do the old method, which is you know rocking, nursing to sleep, whatever it was that you were doing originally that obviously isn't working. You don't wanna do that for one nap time or bedtime and not the other, same at night. If you're gonna do this gentle sleep training method when you first lay your baby down, you need to stick with it for the entire night. If it took two hours for your baby to settle and fall asleep, if they wake up in an hour, which they probably will, crying, you have to go in and settle them the same way that you put them to bed. If you pick them up and you start rocking them or nursing them back to sleep, it's just gonna confuse them and it will actually make the crying worse. It will make it a lot harder for them to put themselves to sleep because they know that if they cry long enough and hard enough, they're gonna get what they want in the end ultimately. As a friendly reminder, ways to pacify your baby in the night, go in, say, it's okay, you woke up, you're just going back to sleep. Lay them back down however many times you need to. You can put your hand on their back. Try not to pat them too much because that can be overstimulating, but just put your hand on their back and you can sing to them or you can talk gently to them and sit next to the crib and just reassure them that, hey, you're safe, everything's fine, you're just going back to sleep. The next question, what do you do if the baby is upset and protesting? Do you cuddle until calm, then put down, or not cuddle at all? This will largely depend on how old your baby is. So for me, when I was sleep training, my son was almost a year old. And when my first son, who's now four, I did the same method and he was over a year old. You don't want to cuddle older children. So I would say if your baby's able to stand up and walk and do all of those things or babble, picking up and cuddling will actually do the opposite of what you want. It will overstimulate them and it'll be harder to settle them down. So what you wanna do is just Go in and similar to what I said in the first question, you just lay them back down in their crib. So put your arm underneath like the back part of their leg where their knees are behind their knees and then your head behind your head, your hand behind their head and you just kind of like swoop them, lay them back down and you might have to do that up to a hundred times. I'm not even kidding, but just lay them down, comfort them, put your hand on their back, say it's okay you're just going to sleep. Full disclosure, because a lot of people wonder like, hey, my baby's crying, am I not doing this right? You're doing it right, babies will cry. This is how they learn how to fall asleep. That's what's developmentally appropriate for all babies of all ages. Crying is their only way of communication. It's their only way to tell you, I don't like this, this isn't how I fall asleep, pick me up. If your baby's crying, just stick with it. The reason this is gentle is because you're not leaving them to cry alone, you're sitting next to them and you're reassuring them, it's okay, you're just falling asleep. 
Now, if your baby is younger than a year old, maybe let's say they're six months old or seven months old and they're not quite standing up yet, they're still kind of laying down in the crib, you can pick them up and, you know, kind of like bounce them or shush pat them on their butt until they calm down and stop crying. And then once they do, you can lay them down. Now, with younger babies, they will start crying more times than not. They'll start crying before you've even laid them back down into the crib just follow through. So if you've got them calm and you start to go to lay your baby down and they cry, just go for it. Just keep laying them down, take a step back and then pick them right back up. And again, you might have to do this like a hundred times. It's gonna make your back feel terrible the next day, but it does work. If you stick with it and you're consistent, it will work. Within three days, you won't be doing that anymore. You'll just be in the room next to the crib, comforting them and letting them know everything's okay, they're just going to sleep. The next question, we didn't stay consistent. So should we wait a few days and try again or can we try again tonight? If you fall off the bandwagon, don't give up. Just go right back at it. The only time I would advise you to maybe take a break and wait maybe a couple of weeks or even a month is if you've been flip-flopping a lot. Like let's say you start with the Ferber method or cry, some form of cry it out and then you try this and then you go back to Ferber, but then you go back to this and then you go back to Ferber. If you've done that a lot within a couple of weeks or maybe longer you've done that, give it a break. Just comfort your baby, rebuild that trust that you are there and you are gonna take care of them that that way they're not afraid and fearful. Rebuild that trust with them. And then once they're calmer and more, um, but once they seem more like themselves again, then you can start doing this method. Now, let's say you started this method, but then you just went back to rocking or nursing to sleep. And you know, maybe you got a little bit of progress, but then, you know, like any mom, you just wanna like cuddle your baby a little extra and then they start falling asleep in your arms again and you go back, you've taken some steps back. Jump right back into the method. It's probably gonna take you a little bit longer to get them to fall asleep on their own because as I said in the beginning of this video, babies are smart, you know, if they make the connection that they cry enough and they get what they want, they're gonna keep doing that. But if they know that there's no ultimatum, if they know like, oh gosh, I'm in the crib, it's time to sleep. That's what they're gonna go. They're gonna adjust and then eventually they're gonna learn to fall asleep on their own and you'll be golden. Next question, how long does it take until the baby falls asleep on his own? Again, this depends on the age of the baby. So in my experience, the younger the baby, the faster this method is going to work. So I don't know if I mentioned it in my first video, but my son, the one I sleep trained in that video, I actually had him sleeping through the night at four months old. And I started with Tracy Hogg's easy routine where even as a newborn, I tried my best to let him fall asleep on his own. So if I was done nursing him, even when he was a newborn, if I was done nursing him and he was still awake, I would lay him in his crib awake and if he didn't cry, I would just leave him there until he fell asleep on his own. If he started fussing, then I would pick him up because you're not supposed to do any sort of sleep training before the age of four months. That's what's recommended. I was really diligent about doing that and he, when we, when the four month regression hit, it wasn't even an issue. Like he just slept, like we didn't experience that. But then he started getting recurrent ear infections and at around six months old, we had a sleep issue because I was so nervous about him being sick and having enough hydration and comfort and all of those things. Like I ended up rocking him to sleep, giving him a bottle to sleep, all of the things you're not supposed to do, but I did it anyways. So I ended up needing to sleep train him. So in the beginning when he was really little, it wasn't an issue, but the older they get, the harder it is. My now four year old, who I mentioned, I also did this method with, he was 15 months old when I sleep trained him. And it took me two months to get him to sleep through the night, to fall asleep on his own, me leave the room, him go to sleep and sleep through the night. With Ethan, my youngest son, the one that I showed in the video, he was doing it after a week. And I think a large part of it is because I had him on this method from when he was born. And so just restarting it and like reteaching him, I guess, retraining him, it, he was able to get back on board a lot quicker. And he was also younger. He was, I wanna say 11 months, just turned a year old. Next question. 
Do you think it's possible to sleep train and co-sleep? And this is where there's a lot of conflicting advice and I personally, I think that you can co-sleep and do this method. But the way you co-sleep is gonna affect it. If you've been nursing your baby to sleep in bed and then leaving your baby in bed with you, you're probably gonna have to stop doing that and have your baby sleep in a bassinet next to your bed for several months until that habit is broken because babies, they smell you, they know you're there. Like if you have been nursing your baby to sleep and you're right physically next to them, that's like torture. <laughs> like your baby's just gonna be so angry that you are not feeding him or her to sleep anymore. You kind of have to break that habit. You have to completely break away from that routine and start a new one so that they're in a different headspace. So that when they're laying in bed with you, they're not instantly thinking, food and sleep. You want them to be laying in their bassinet. Okay, it's time to sleep. Shut off. I've put myself to sleep. I hope that makes sense. So if you are co-sleeping, do your bedtime routine as you usually would. You know, if you nurse in bed, keep doing that. Nurse your baby in bed. But if they fall asleep, you wake them right back up and you put them in the bassinet. And this is going to make them so mad. They are going to cry, 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 and be so angry. And you do your pickup put down and you just have to stick with it. Um, if you're doing this where you're keeping them in the room with you, it's probably going to take a lot longer than three days to a week. It might take you a couple of months. Next question. Would you recommend doing this as early as three months? As I mentioned, it is recommended that you don't do any form of sleep training until four months. That's what the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends. I would say wait if you can until four months old. That is the age when both of my boys I felt were developmentally ready, where they started to be more aware of my presence. If your baby's not aware of your presence yet, I would suggest that you just keep meeting their needs whenever they want it. And I know that sucks. That's not what you want to hear to just feed your baby on demand still. But if they're not aware of you even like coming in and leaving the room, that's just going to be really scary for them if you try to sleep train because they developmentally they physically cannot understand the concept that you're trying to teach them yet okay next question what if the method doesn't work for nap time and the baby becomes overtired for bedtime do you think on those days we could put him to nap the old ways feeding rocking etc no remember you have to stay consistent so what you do for bedtime you're also doing for your nap time here is a rule that i followed whenever i was sleep training let's say your baby's nap time is at 10 a.m and you want your baby to sleep from 10 to let's say 11:30, so an hour and a half let's say you're trying to put your baby to bed and it's 11 o'clock and they still have not fallen asleep you keep trying you keep trying up until 11 30. if your baby falls asleep at 11 25 you let them sleep for five minutes and then you wake them back up and then you wait until their next bedtime now your baby can get overtired so when you're doing this you're going to have an earlier bedtime because you don't want them to just be so wildly overstimulated that you can't settle them because that's just going to frustrate everyone your baby will adjust after like a day or two so you just keep going at that and maybe say next day they fall asleep at 11 o'clock you let them sleep for 30 minutes, wake them up at 11.30. This is training them for the nap slot that you want them to sleep in. That is what I did for my one-year-old. Now let's say your baby is five to six months old. That strategy might not work because you're gonna have multiple naps. You're not just gonna have one nap a day. So if your baby falls asleep at 11.25, let them sleep for the five minutes, 45 minutes to an hour later, try again for their second nap. Even if their second nap was much later in the day, you're gonna have to bump things up a little bit earlier until they adjust. And you'll just keep making small adjustments by 15 minutes here or there for the preceding naps. So let me recap that, because I, I kind of confused myself explaining it. So if your baby falls asleep at 11.25, you wake them up at 11.30, Let's say at 12.30, you start their second nap of the day or whatever nap of the day it is. And if that goes well, then the next day, you wake them up at 11.30 and then try 12.45. And if that goes well, then you extend it to one until you finally get to whatever their second nap of the day is, if that's two or three o'clock. Next question. 
How long should I try this method for nap time if the baby isn't settling? That kind of goes into the previous question that I just answered. You keep trying for the entire duration of the nap. Now, I do want to add in something. If you're consistently having issues getting your baby to fall asleep, so if you're in there for an hour every single day at nap time trying to get your baby to go to sleep and it's not working, a good rule of thumb is three days. So if on the third day it's still taking you over an hour to get your baby to go to sleep, that is telling you that either A, the baby is not tired yet, so maybe they need a later nap time, or B, the baby's too tired try a little bit earlier though in my experience if it's taking over an hour the baby's just not tired yet also depending on age it could mean that your baby is dropping a nap again play around with those nap times maybe if you know the 10 a.m nap time isn't working and you're in there for over an hour for three days in a row try doing 10 30 and if you notice that gets a little bit better but they're still like fighting you for a good 30 minutes try 10 45 and then just do the like 15 minute increments until you get to that sweet spot where it's not taking more than 20 minutes for your baby to fall asleep on their own what do i do if my baby just wants to play then you let them play <laughs> if you can leave the room and your baby just plays in their crib, do it. If they're if they're fine with that, do it. Let them play until they eventually put themselves to sleep. That's cool. That's what you want. Um if they're just wanting to play with you and when you leave the room, they're getting upset, but they're just they're not getting in that nap mode. A, you either need to have a like a more solid established bed and nap time routine where you know you do like a bath bottle books bed type of thing or it's like in the previous question i just answered maybe they're just not tired enough yet or maybe they're dropping that nap again play around with it and just go off of your baby's cues this isn't like a solid set in stone type of deal like it's a communication it's a relationship with your child if they are telling you that they need to be awake longer let them be awake longer and see how that goes. What should I do if my baby just cries hysterically and won't let me calm her down with just words? That is so hard because my son, the one I sleep trained in the video, he is exactly like that. It, he, to this day, if he's upset, I can't comfort him by holding him or talking to him. Occasionally I can with words. For him, his little trick was I could sing to him and that would calm him down. You just need to get to know your baby and get to know what comforts them, what soothes them. If you are trying this method and your baby is like hysterical and whether you're holding them or leaving them in the crib, don't lose hope. You probably just have an angry, temperamented baby my son is very angry and so he cried hysterically for two hours straight whenever i did this routine but i stayed next to him i made sure that he was safe he had a clean diaper he was well fed i already knew that going into sleep training and i kept talking to him I let him know that I was there and that he was just falling asleep and that everything was okay. And even though it took two hours of intense crying, the very next day, he only cried for 30 minutes. Then the next day after that, he barely cried at all. You just have to build that trust with your child. If they're screaming and crying hysterically, like, they're just letting you know, I'm really angry. I am so upset that you have just changed everything completely. Why aren't you feeding me anymore? Or why aren't you doing the things you used to do to put me to sleep? I don't wanna do this by myself. It's better to make them do it by themselves now than wait until they're much older and then you've got a sleep problem, like a clinical sleep problem where you would have to see doctors. Next question, how is your son sleeping now that it's been a few months? <laughs> Does it still take 20 to 40 minutes of the method to get him to fall asleep? He's still sleeping through the night. We recently moved to a new house and now our boys are sharing a room. For a good month or two, I was staying in the room for a good amount of time, mainly because they were just trying to play with each other and I needed to kind of lay down the law with both that no, this isn't playtime, this is going to bedtime. Now that we've been in our house for about three months, it's a lot easier. So for nap times, it's five minutes I'm in there. I tuck my son into bed, my older son into bed, and then I hold Ethan for a moment, I lay him down, I say, I love you, have a good nap, and then that's it. 
I leave the room. For bedtime, it's a little more involved. They're more tired. And so my older son, he can fall asleep on his own. It's no big deal. But for my one-year-old, almost two-year-old now, sorry, my camera cut off. <laughs> so for my almost two-year-old, I lay him down and then I sit in the chair next to him for a few minutes. I think maybe because it's darker outside and he's still getting used to that room, he just doesn't, he has a bit of separation anxiety. So I do sit in there for about five to 10 minutes. If he's sick, it's a lot longer. I will sit in his room for up to an hour. But again, that's usually when he's sick. Um, after a few minutes, once he's like settled and kind of still in his crib, like once he's not like rolling around, then I get up and I leave the room and it's no big deal. When exactly do I put my baby down? He makes a loud whining noise when I pick him up. Do I lay him down while he's still doing this or do I wait for him to stop? If your baby's just whining, lay him right back down. And if you find that you're getting frustrated, just he's constantly whining and you're picking him up, you might be overstimulating him. So let him whine a little bit. I know that sounds a little bit mean and this is a gentle sleep training video, but let them kind of work it out on their own. I mean, you know your baby's cries best. So you know their cry for when they're scared or fearful. You know their cry for when they're hurt. You know their cries for when they're just angry and you know their cries for if they just feel uncomfortable or lonely or you know, whatever. Listen to your baby's cries because that's how they talk to you. If your baby's just doing kind of like a whiny, eh, I don't like this type of cry, leave them in the crib and just say, hey, it's okay, you're going to sleep, I love you. I'll see you in the morning. You're gonna have such a good night. You're gonna feel so well rested in the morning. You know, just speak positive affirmations, like just stick with it and let them work it out because sometimes that's what the baby needs. The baby just needs to work it out on their own. I use a combo of shush pat and pick up put down. Sometimes one will work and the other doesn't and vice versa. Should I just stick to one method? You can use both methods together. The shush pat after about six months old is more distracting than it is helpful though. So if your baby's older than six months old, I wouldn't do the shush pat at all. I would just stick with pick up, put down. And then again, if your child is standing up in the crib already, you're not actually going to pick them up anymore. That would be really hard on your back. You're just gonna do the, pit, the put down part of the method. What do I do if my baby wakes up from a nap after only 35 minutes? You get them up and you, it's the end of nap time. Usually for a 35 minute nap, that means they were undertired. 45 minute naps usually mean overtired. If they were undertired, that might mean, you know, maybe the next nap time, they you need to stretch it 15 minutes. Um, also, if they've only taken a 35 minute nap, that means the second nap of the day or third nap of the day, whatever it is, you're gonna have to bump it up early and then you're gonna have an early bedtime. You're gonna have to play around with those for a little bit until you get your baby on a more set eat, play, sleep routine. My baby is 10 months old. Do I pick up completely and soothe, then put down, or do I just put back down? Just put back down, yeah. Good rule of thumb is if the baby's standing up, you just do the put down portion of the method. It's gonna be easier for you and it's also gonna be less stimulating and more beneficial for them. Do I start this process for both nap time and bedtime or pick one? I feel like my baby will spend all day crying. I started with bedtime. I felt like it was important to have one more nap in before jumping right into sleep training because there is gonna be a period of time where your baby's overtired because you're taking a lot longer to get them to fall asleep. So I started with bedtime and then once I did bedtime, I stuck with it and I just went into nap times and did the bedtimes and repeat, repeat, repeat until we are where we're at now. I have an active, wiggly one-year-old. I'm wondering how she can sleep on her own if she won't even stay laying down. You just gotta stick with it. If this is the method you wanna try, I promise you if you stick with it, after about a week, even the wiggliest of wiggly toddlers will lay down. My son is crazy, he climbs. He even climbs out of his crib now, but he's too little to go without a crib. Even with that personality type, I can get him to fall asleep on his own in his crib. I just have to make sure to get in there once he's awake so he doesn't crawl out of his crib. The method worked for me, yay! But now I'm wondering, when do I go and check on the baby? I don't have a baby monitor. If you don't have a baby monitor, 
Just leave the door cracked so that you can hear. Don't go in there unless the baby's crying like hysterically for you. Sometimes babies will wake up in the middle of the night. My one year old still does this. He will wake up and he will fuss for about five minutes and then he goes right back to sleep. Most of the time, babies aren't actually awake when they are doing this. So if you hear your baby crying out, even if it sounds like a genuine cry, I would wait, just like hang back for maybe five, 10 minutes and see if they can kind of like work it out. A lot of times they're just dreaming and so they're not even really awake. They're not even aware of what they're doing. My baby used to do this thing where it wasn't like night terrors, but he would cry hysterically for 10 minutes straight. But if I go in there, or if I would go in there and pick him up, he like felt limp because he actually wasn't awake. He was asleep. Kind of gauge your baby. If you hear that, like I said, if you hear that fearful cry or if you hear that scared cry or that hurt cry or maybe he just doesn't sound right because he's coming down with a cold go in and check on them at that point but otherwise just leave them alone they're gonna work it out and then you'll be surprised they'll fall back asleep and then you can just keep sleeping too do you comfort the baby in between picking up and putting down if so how yes you should always be comforting your baby. That's why this is considered a gentle sleep training method. If your baby, if you're actively doing the training portion of this, sitting in the room with them, yes, comfort them, sing to them, tell them I love you, it's okay. Just keep reassuring them that this is normal. You're going to sleep and it's 100% normal. It's what everybody does. And also just tell them like, you're gonna feel so good after you get a good night's rest. Even though they're babies and it doesn't seem like they understand what we're saying to them, you'd be surprised. They pick up on more than we realize and just the tone of your voice, if you stay calm and you stay reassuring, they're gonna pick up on that and they're gonna feel comforted and they're gonna feel good. I hear my baby crying actually, so I'm gonna have to hurry this up because he just woke up from his nap. <laughs> So I wasn't able to finish before he woke up from his nap, so. We've got a little man joining us today. Let me just fix the camera. So if you watched my original video, then yes, he's a lot older now, but he sleeps through the night and he takes great naps. Jumping back into the questions. My five month old has learned to roll over on her tummy. Should I pick her up and put her back down when she rolls over or leave her on her tummy if she hasn't yet cried? If your baby's able to roll over, and roll back over, you just leave them alone, especially if they're not crying. If they aren't able to roll over yet, I mean, this is your discretion and I'm not a doctor, so always check with your pediatrician first. But for me with my boys, if they could roll over and I knew they could lift their heads up and kind of like move their heads around, I just left them on their belly. Otherwise, I was in there all the time just flipping them back over onto their back. Most babies wanna sleep on their tummy and at five months, like you're pretty golden to just leave them in that position as long as you know that they are consistently rolling into that position and that they can lift their head. What do I do if my baby starts crying the moment I start to lay back down? Just follow through with it. Just keep laying them right back down and then picking them right back up. Or if they're older, just laying them, doing the put down portion, just put them right back down into the crib. Eventually they're gonna get tired. And then if you're consistent, they're gonna know automatically, like it's pointless to stand back up. Mom's just gonna lay me back down. And then they're gonna get to business and they're gonna do what they need to do, which is fall asleep. Does this method work with a pacifier? It does. So my first son, he used a pacifier and it actually helped us out a lot. He would take the pacifier and you know, he would suckle on it and he would fall asleep and it would help pacify him. The only problem is that we had to sort of re-sleep train him when he was about two and a half because we took the pacifier away. It started affecting his teeth. We took the pacifier and that was a bit of a struggle because he was so used to having it to fall asleep that I ended up sitting in his room for a good hour for, I wanna say three months. Because like I said, the older the child is when you do sleep training, the harder it is and the longer it takes for it to work. And that's regardless of methods, even if it's Ferber or any like baby wise or any of the other sleep training methods out there. Another thing to worry about with the pacifier is that if your baby isn't coordinated enough to put the pacifier back in his or her mouth, you're gonna have to be going in there at night to do that for them. 
yeah, they've been sleep trained, but you're still waking up to, to put the pacifier back in. Does that make sense? With Ethan, he never took a pacifier. He never really liked them, so it wasn't an option for us to fall back on. And now that we've gone through sleep training, I'm actually really glad that he never liked a pacifier because we didn't have to do any sort of retraining and we didn't have to worry about taking the pacifier away from him. My mother-in-law would not be willing to do this method when she watches my son. Will it still work? It will, but it's gonna take a lot longer because remember, consistency is key. So if you're doing one thing with your baby, but someone else is doing something else, it could confuse them. On that same note, Babies know what to expect with different parents and different caregivers. So if they know that when you're putting them to bed, they have to fall asleep on their own, they'll adjust to that. But it might take them a while to figure those associations out. So sleep training, it will work, but it's gonna take longer. My baby still takes a bottle twice a night. How do I wean him from this? So depending on the age of your baby, um, for us, we fall into the camp of a baby needs a bottle, at least one bottle up until a year old. Realistically though, you okay? Realistically though, babies can do without a bottle once they're old enough to sleep through the night. Just get make sure they're getting enough calories during the day. To wean Ethan off of the bottle feedings, we did the water bottle trick. Let's say your baby is taking, what did she say? Twice a night. So the first bottle of the night, replace that with water. And then the second bottle, you do milk again. And then eventually they learn that the first bottle is water and they don't like it. And so they drop that and they should stop waking up for that bottle. And so then you're only having to replace the second bottle with water and eventually they get tired and they don't want it. Now, the only way that trick works is if you're making sure they're getting enough calories during the day. If they're getting calories at night, they're not gonna be eating as much during the day and so you need to make sure that they're gonna be satiated enough, otherwise they really will be hungry when they wake up at night. They shouldn't be, they should be old enough to have enough calories during the day to take them through the night, you just have to get them to that, that point. If my baby currently likes to Oh, if my baby currently takes a bottle to fall asleep before bed, how do I transition away from this? So you can keep giving your baby the bottle right before bed, but make sure they're awake when you lay them down. That's the only, the only rule of thumb is they can drink that bottle and if they fall asleep, you wake them back up, see if they wanna finish the bottle if they haven't drank much of it. Although honestly, if they're not drinking much of the bottle, they're just using it as a pacifier. So if that's the case, I would say just get rid of that bottle and just, you know, go straight to laying him down or replace it with water, do the water bottle trick. Um, but if they're still drinking the full bottle and they're still awake after they drink it, you can keep it in their routine and then just do the sleep training. I have a 19 month old. Do I still pick up to comfort and then put down? No, <laughs> with a 19 month old, you definitely don't. That baby probably can communicate really well, and so it's gonna take you a lot longer to put that baby to sleep. It's probably gonna take two months of doing this method for it to work because that baby's significantly older. But yes, don't pick up, just do the lay down portion because that's just gonna stimulate the baby more and make him think he's getting out of bed and it's gonna hurt your back. And the last question, if you stuck with me this long, then thank you and I hope that you found this video helpful. Uh, does this method work while traveling or should I just wait and wait to start until after we get back from vacation? Ah, uh, I would wait until you come back. Now, if you travel a lot, um, like let's say for work or something, or if you've got a lot of vacations coming up and that's just how you live your life, go ahead and sleep train. But otherwise, if this is just like a one-off trip, I would wait until you do your trip and come back. Otherwise, you might make some progress with sleep training and then you're gonna change the whole sleep environment and have to like start over while you're traveling and then start over again when you get home. So that's it, that's all my questions. My very active toddler is awake now, so I'm gonna say bye to you. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, leave me a, a comment down below or if you have any other questions I didn't answer, drop them down below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe if you're new and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>